Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We want to talk to you about exponential change and in particular how the equation for exponential change can be written as a differential equation, particularly a separable first order equation. How we write that the rate of change of some quantity is equal to some multiple of itself, which is exponential change. So we can write this as dy dt equals k times y. Now dy dt obviously is just the change in y with respect to time, the instantaneous rate of change in y at any point in time, equal to ky. k is just some constant multiple of y. So we have the change in y with respect to time is going to equal some multiple of y here. Let's go ahead and work this out as a separable equation dy dt equals ky. So you'll notice if we have dy on top already and dt is on the bottom, that means that we would keep dy on the left side and we would move dt to the right side. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply dt over to the other side. That will give us that dy is equal to k times y times dt. And now we're almost separated here. I could move the k with the y to the other side if I want. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it here. You can do whatever you want. So to get y on the other side, I'll need to divide both sides by y. And then we'll be separated. We will have dy over y on the left side, and we'll have k times dt. Now remember that k is just a constant, so you do have all of the t's on one side, right? So we have all the y's here, all the t's here, inseparable equations. Once we're separated, then we can go ahead and take the antiderivative with respect to y here and with respect to t over here. If I take the integral of dy over y, that's a log rule. So here we'll get the natural log absolute value of y. And on the other side, this is just some constant. So if I integrate a constant dt, then that will give me that constant times t. Now remember, we would technically have a constant on both sides, but I'm just going to go ahead and combine them all on one side. I'll call that c over here. Now if we can solve for y reasonably, we should, and I think it's reasonable to solve for y here, so let's go ahead and do that. What I would need to do is I would need to get rid of my natural log first, so we'll go ahead and take exponential e as an operation of both sides e to the ln of something just gives us that something, right? So we get absolute value of y on the left. And then on the right, be careful, this whole right side just becomes the exponent, right? So we get e to the k t plus c. Now, I'm going to break this up into two separate pieces to work with it a little more nicely. So properties of exponents tell us that add in the exponent is the same as having multiply with the same base, right? So that's the same as e to the kt times e to the c. And let's look at this last part here. What is e to just some constant? Well, e is just some number, right? It's about 2.7 to some constant. Is, that's just going to be a constant itself, right? So I'm going to go ahead and actually drop my absolute value brackets and talk about y in a second. And we'll say y is equal to just some constant. I'll move that to the front. So we'll say c times e to the k t. And we'll go ahead and say that I'm going to allow c to be positive or negative, and that's going to take care of worrying about the absolute value brackets for me. So we get the equation for exponential change, which is y equals c times e to the kt. You might see this in different forms depending on the context. In a chemistry course or something like that, you might see something like a equals a sub zero times e to the kt. Right? But k is our rate, right? It's our rate of growth. And we have an ending amount and a starting amount here, a sub zero. In other words, the amount at time zero, perhaps. You might have also seen this in terms of continuous compounding. a equals p times e to the rt. Same equation there. Exponential chain is just continuous compound interest with our rate expressed as an r instead of a k. Um, we'll definitely make a note here that when k is a positive number, then we have exponential growth as exponential change when our rate is positive. And when our rate of change is negative, then we're getting less stuff and we'll call that exponential decay. But these are the forms for exponential change that you're likely to see most of the time. And this is the differential equation that it comes from. It's a first order separable equation. We'll quickly point out that most exponential change doesn't actually happen without bound. It actually approaches some sort of a limiting value and that type of exponential growth is actually called logistic growth. And that's the subject of our next video in this series. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you then.